Hey YouTube, um, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but um, just in case it's, it turns out to be super long, um, I apologize in advance, but um, I'm going to do a lot of talking about my life experiences with my Asperger's and my attempts at trying to express my feelings and, you know, um, how hard things have been for me. Now, um, let me just start this off by saying that people can overcome things, and this isn't my attempt to complain or, you know, sit here and whine that my life is unfair. It, it's not that at all. It's just, you know, I feel that this might be helpful to other people who have Asperger's or maybe kind of informative to people who don't so they understand what someone like me goes through. Um, for basically my whole life, I've been, you know, I, I kind of find it really hard to express myself the way that I want to. Um, I'm not always... I'm, I'm a very emotional person, and um, maybe that doesn't come across here, but... Um, when I am emotional and I tend to have these outbursts, it doesn't come out usually the way I intend it to. Like, you know, sometimes I'm just upset, not necessarily angry at anything, but, you know, it comes out that way. And, um, like just then, I wasn't, that's not how I wanted to say that at all, but I can't, I even have a little script here that I kind of wrote up to help me out, but I can't even, you know, even having it thought ahead, I can't process it properly. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, basically my whole life I've just found it hard to, you know, be around others, seeing how they interact with each other, it, you know, it just bothers me. You know, these people all seem to have this connection with each other, and I just feel so disconnected. And, um, everybody else seems to, and this is just my personal thing, um, uh, they just seem to understand each other, and, um, I don't understand anything people do. Um, I don't understand their motives, I just, I just can't understand it, but, um, the thing is, with people, you know, no matter how hard I try to, um, be friends with people or, you know, associate with people and try and form bonds with them, it just seems like the more I try to do that, the more that a big part of me just wants to shy away. And it's it's like there's two parts of me that are constantly clashing with each other. Um, you know, it's like the right half of my brain or whatever, this isn't scientific also, and I think I just made that up, but anyway, um, it's like the right half of my brain is saying, you want friends, you should have friends, and you won't be so upset or lonely or anything, and the other half of my brain is telling me, you're, you don't want friends, you don't need friends, you shouldn't have to be around other people, and it's just a constant battle, you know? But, um, you know, like I said, that's been my whole life. You know, I've gotten better around people, but that doesn't mean that, you know, I view people any differently than I used to. They're still just as, as big of a mystery to me now as they were then. I still don't understand, you know the way they work, I don't, well, I can't see past my own nose, basically. It's, basically, I know what I know, 
based on how I feel, what I perceive, and I can't know anything other than that. You know, it, it, that's just the way that it works for me. And maybe I can, but, you know, it's... You know, having this, it's probably going to be a lot harder for me to get past that than it would be for, you know, a neurotypical person. But, um, basically... You know, I like I said before, I have a lot of difficulty expressing myself and my emotions. And also, like I said before, I do tend to blow up a lot. Um, I know a lot of this has to do with the Asperger's, but some of it has to do with... I just never learned how to cope properly. Um, I can remember one particular um, instance when I was in middle school, and uh, a lot of my a good couple of my Facebook friends would probably, um, <laughs> tell you this story, too, but, um, I've, I, okay, I was in middle school, eighth grade, I think, yeah, it was definitely eighth grade, but, um, in eighth grade, I was reading a book, it was actually the third Harry Potter book, but, um, I was reading that, and, he said, the teacher, I was in class, the teacher had said to put away your textbooks. Okay? And I was sitting there reading my Harry Potter book, or whatever, and he said, he repeated the same phrase. And I still didn't. And he took it from me. Which you know, I got very upset at, he, you know, that was, that act, that book was actually special to me, because my aunt had given it to me for my birthday, and he took it, I took that as a personal attack on me, you know, like, he, he wanted to upset me, he wanted to make me angry, and, well, he succeeded, I took the chair I was sitting in after he would not give it back because I tried to get it back. I tried to leave the room. He stood in front of the door. Um, but I took my chair and I slid it across the room. You know, other people will tell you I threw it. I didn't throw it. You know, if I threw it, he would have been a lot more hurt than what he was. Um, but, yeah, I slid the chair across the room and it hit him in the leg. Um, I know that wasn't appropriate, what, uh, an appropriate way to behave, but, you know, like I said, I do have problems expressing myself, and, you know. But anyway, you know, that just led me to feel like complete crap, basically, because I'm, I got kicked out of school for that. I lost anybody who could have potentially been my friend, and nobody talked to me after that, everybody called me the crazy kid or whatever, you know, and I got, I got stigmatized, I got, I got that crazy person stigma attached to me, and it, it's just, um, that was really hard to deal with, and, you know, after that, I spent the next, well, uh, what's today, um, I spent the next like, seven years, around there, um, basically locked up in my room, not going anywhere, not doing anything, not wanting to talk to anyone, um, that's basically what it was for those seven years, I didn't want to talk to anyone, everyone just was a burden and an inconvenience to me, and it just seemed like they, all they wanted to do was judge me, and my self-esteem was shot after that. You know, not that it was the greatest to begin with. I always thought I was the weird kid. But after that, it was completely shot. I didn't have any motivation to do anything. And, you know, I just felt like I was never good enough for anybody. You know, even, even my own mom. When that happened, I feel like I really disappointed her. And, um... Yeah, so basically, that's where I think my, um self-esteem issues came from, like a majority of them, you know, but, 
I'm sorry. Um, and, you know, basically, I've been getting a little bit better about dealing with people, but dealing with my self-esteem issues and dealing with my emotions are still things I struggle with. You know, because I don't know how to cope. I don't know how I'm supposed to just be okay after something like that happens. I don't know how I'm supposed to, you know, just move on and be able to deal with it. Um, and, you know, I've tried to get help for it. It just, I don't understand the, the concept. You know, it's just very, very difficult for me. And, um... I don't know. I, it's just, like I said, it's a real struggle for me. I don't know what else to to do, or I can't even think of anything to do. But, um, yeah, I just figured I'd share these couple things with you. I know it's probably not as detailed or, you know, what you guys were looking for, but, you know, like I said, I just wanted to get that out there and tell you a couple of my, couple of my experiences and hopefully uh, that helped out a little.